Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to this telecast of Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and bring the Word of God to you and spend this time with you. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about uh, tests, temptations and trials. And uh, we've covered an in-depth view of tests as we see them, as we find them in Scripture and how God presented various kinds of tests to his people and uh, saw their response and saw what they would do uh, in those situations. On the telecast today, we want to talk about temptations. Another area in which you and I will be challenged uh, in our journey through life. And surely there is no one who could say that I would never face temptations in life. That's, uh, that's not possible. Uh, because God has permitted for a time and a season uh, the tempter, the devil himself and all of his demonic forces to do their job on the earth, to keep doing what they're doing. So God has permitted that and you and I as believers are really living in a world that the devil and his demons are going about their activity and uh, so you and I will face temptations. So we want to talk about this and we want to talk about how you and I can overcome. What do we do when we face temptations? Now, in the New Testament, it is the same Greek word uh, that is translated temptations uh, in many different places, but it is used in two different contexts. Uh, in one context, uh, that same word is used as temptation, meaning an inducement to sin. And in, some other con in another context, that word is also translated temptation, but it's actually used to talk about trials, troubles, and tribulations that come against us, adverse situations that come against us. And so we need to keep this in mind as we uh, uh, look at New Testament scripture. Uh, although the word may be translated temptation in all of these places, uh, we need to interpret that word uh, dip in, depending on the context in which it is used. And on the program today, we are talking about temptations in the context of it being an inducement to sin, doing something wrong uh, in disobedience to God or in taking us away from our faith in God. Like we saw in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5, where Paul writes to the Thessalonians and he says, I, I wanted to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter has tempted you and our labor might be in vain. So here he is concerned about their faith in God. But they are continuing to walk in faith, uh, lest the devil has uh, drawn them away from their faith in God. So, let's just talk about, you know, how the enemy goes about tempting us, presenting his temptations to us, and then how we should respond, how we should overcome, and what are some things we see in Scripture that God has taught us to do during times of temptation. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, we have uh, the record of the Lord Jesus himself being tempted by the devil. Uh, and Jesus was led by the Spirit. He was, went into the wilderness, and there he was tempted by the devil. And uh, he was, you know, at a time of fasting and seeking the Father, and uh, he had spent 40 days um, fasting. And so obviously he was hungry, uh, tired maybe. And uh, it was at this point in Matthew 4 and verse 3, it says, the tempter came to him, and he said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to be bread. Now, you can imagine the temptation coming. It comes as a suggestion, a thought, an idea, something that comes across your mind. Uh, and, and it's uh, attacking a point of weakness at that moment in the Lord. Uh, you know, he was hungry, obviously, after 40 days of fasting. And so the idea, the thought that comes into his mind that the devil plants there is, hey, make these stones bread. You've got the power to do it. And uh, you, you know, you're the Son of God. You can do it. But Jesus responds by quoting scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 8. And he says, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that goes out of the mouth of God. And then verse 5 of Matthew chapter 4, it says the devil takes him up to, a, to the holy city and he sets him on the pinnacle of the temple. Now, obviously, it's not that the Lord Jesus physically went up to the pinnacle of the temple. Jesus was in the wilderness. So this was an imagination. It was something in the mind. So the devil planted that imagination in his mind. Where he showed Jesus standing on top of the temp, pinnacle of the temple. And then the, uh, the devil quotes scripture. He, he misuses scripture. He uses a psalm, a verse from Psalm 91, which says, you know, uh, that God will give angels charge over you to keep you and hold you up. And so he says, you know, just jump from here 
and your angels will hold you up and uh, you can uh, you know, really uh, prove yourself to be the son of God. So now you see a temptation comes. It's actually an inducement to do something wrong. But the devil is actually using scripture to try to cause that inducement to do something wrong. So we've got to be careful. That means even if you, a scripture comes to your mind, you've got to, be make, you've got to make sure it's being used correctly. Uh, because the enemy can also use scripture, twist it and turn it and use it out of context and, 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 and use scripture to induce us to do things that are wrong. So you've got to be very careful that the enemy uh, doesn't do this to us. So here as an imagination, you see pictures of Jesus standing up on the pinnacle of the temple. He gives him a verse saying, look, angels will hold you up, jump. You know, and then Jesus refutes that temptation. He rejects that temptation once again by quoting scripture. He says, it is written, you, cannot, you should not tempt the Lord your God. And then in verse 8 of Matthew 4, we see once again the devil uh, takes him up to a high mountain. He shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. Now, again, this is an imagination in the mind, meaning through the imagination, by releasing a picture across the mind of Jesus. Now, so Jesus is in the wilderness, but the devil is showing him all the kingdoms of the world. He's showing him, like giving him a world tour. So obviously it's not physical. It's not that Jesus is literally going all around the world. There's which, how high a mountain can you climb up to see all of that? So it's obviously not a physical thing. It's in the imagination that the enemy is presenting this temptation to Jesus. And he's showing him all of the kingdoms of the world. And he says, you know, I will give you all this. You just fall down and worship me. So here he's giving him a shortcut saying, okay, Jesus, you've come in to take possession of this world. I will give it to you. I will hand it off to you. Just fall, worship me. So here is a temptation that is actually trying to deviate Jesus from his life assignment, from his purpose for which he came. Uh, it's almost like providing a shortcut to it. But that shortcut is a very dangerous one. It's not really going to get him there. It's actually going to make things worse. So you be careful sometimes uh, where the temptation of the devil uh, comes in as a means for you to go to your end result to fulfill uh, something that's, div uh, that's God's assignment for your life. But really, that shortcut is not going to take you there. You've got to be very careful how deceiving, how deceptive the enemy can be uh, in his temptation. So here's a temptation that's an imagination, but it's also a deception that is trying to get him. Uh, uh, try to tell him that you are going to fulfill your purpose, but really it's not. And Jesus refutes that temptation once again by quoting the scripture and saying, it is written, you'll worship the Lord your God. And the Bible says the devil left him uh, for a season. So if the Lord Jesus faced temptation like this, you and I will also face temptation. And you and I uh, will, will experience the enemy coming to us, uh, attacking us in the mind with thoughts, with ideas, with suggestions, with imaginations with deceptions, with misquotations of scripture, uh, are bringing all these, these things in our mind, and all of these are an inducement to sin. Now, how does this work? In James chapter 1, uh, and I'm just picking up in, in the latter part of chapter 1, uh, the first part of chapter 1 where the word, word temptation is used, it has to do with trials, but later on in James, he's really dealing with temptations having to do with sin, and that's what we're going to look at. In James chapter 1, verses 12 to 16, James writes, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, that means he passes this temptation, he's going to receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Then he says in verse 13, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So it is not God who is inducing us to sin, but it's the devil. It's the temptation which as an inducement to sin is coming from the devil, not from God. And then he says in verse 14, But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So he's telling us this is how temptation works. Temptation is really a pulling of our own desires in the wrong direction. So the only thing the enemy can do, the only thing the devil can do, is to, try, is to try and stir up our desires and to pull us off into wrong things. So the idea, the thought, the suggestion, the deception, the misquotation of scripture, all of these things are things in the mind which the devil attacks us in the, in the air of the mind. And his one objective is to stir up our desire, to stir up our emotions, to stir up our feelings. 
because every man is tempted when he's drawn by his own desire. The only th thing the devil can do is to stir up our own desires with those wrong thoughts, with those wrong ideas, suggestions, imaginations, and deceptions. And when that desire is stirred up, what happens is it entices the man. It weakens his will to say no. And when the man, when the person gives in to that uh, weakening of the will, that's when he sins. So understand how the enemy operates. Just the way he operated in Jesus, he's going to come and tempt us by putting those thoughts, ideas, imaginations, reasonings, arguments, uh, deceptions, and all of those things that come in the mind. And in order to draw, our, call, uh, stir up our desires and draw us away into something that's wrong. So having the thought come into your mind itself is not sin. Being faced with that temptation itself is not sin. Jesus faced temptation but didn't sin. The Bible is very clear uh, about that. So facing temptation itself is not sin. All of us are going to be tempted. All of us are going to face temptation. So having those thoughts, the wrong ideas, the deceptions, the arguments come into your mind, that's not sin. You haven't sinned yet. Or even having your own desires stirred up is not sin. Even if you feel weak in your will, that's still not sin. It's only when you yield to that, then that's sin. So if you yield by thinking uh, and agreeing with that imagination, then that's when a person commits sin. So don't condemn yourself just because you're, you're feeling tempted. Everybody feels tempted. That itself is not sin, and you don't have to condemn yourself for facing temptation. But we must learn how to overcome temptation. So let's talk about that. What should we do when we are tempted? I want to share a few thoughts here very quickly. First of all, the Bible tells us to be on guard and to know that we can overcome. So when you and I face temptation, we must face it knowing that we can overcome. And it takes a little bit of diligence being on guard to protect ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11 through 14, the Apostle Paul, he talks about all the ways the people of Israel failed. And then he says, you know, uh, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. That's verse 12. In other words, you, you think you're standing, but be careful. Uh, don't get proud. Don't get overconfident. Let him who thinks he stands be careful lest he fall. You always have to be on guard. You can't say that, you know, I've been walking with God for so many years. I know the Bible and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Therefore, I won't fall. No, always be on guard. Uh, take heed is what Paul says. And then he says, no temptation has overtaken you, but what is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you're able to bear. But with the temptation, he will make a way for you to escape so that you can endure it. In other words, know that you can endure. So whatever temptation, whatever area, God will make a way of escape. God is going to come through for you. You and I, well, to, with God, can escape that. We can overcome it. We can, uh, uh, don't have to yield to that temptation. We can uh, live a life that overcomes temptation. Second thing, we must draw strength from God through prayer. You know, prayer is so important because in prayer, as we pray, as we seek God, as we go before God and, draw, and say, God, I need your help, I need your strength, we receive the strength we need to win the spiritual battle. Now, Jesus taught that to us very, very important. He said in Matthew 26 and verse 41, he said, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he says, look, you know, in your heart, you, you're willing, but the body is weak. So what should you do? Be careful, watchful, and pray. Watch and pray. And, uh, and, and, and we pray, we go to the Lord, we draw strength from Him. Now the Lord is there to help us. Hebrews 2 and verse 18 says that He Himself suffered being tempted. He is able to assist or aid those who are being tempted. So the Lord is willing, more than willing, to help us in our, in our temptations. So we must go to Him, draw strength in prayer. The third thing is this. We must resist the devil using our sword and shield. So God has given us weapons. You know, what did Jesus do? Every time the devil came to him with a temptation, he spoke the word, he resisted it, and he did not give any place to the devil. James chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So I must submit to God. I come under obedience to God. I say, God, I want to obey you. I want to honor your word. I do not want to yield to the sinful thing. I do not want to yield to the temptation the devil is bringing in my mind. I submit myself to your word. I want to do your word. Submit yourself to God. Then you resist the devil. How do you resist the devil? With your sword and shield. 
You speak the word, the sword of the word of God. You say what the word says concerning those temptations. So you say what the word says concerning those areas in which the devil is attacking you, uh, coming against you with temptations. And you lift up your shield. You keep your faith strong in God. Don't let any lie, any inducement to sin uh, rob you of you standing on the word. And the fourth thing that we must all understand is that we must get spiritual support and help. That means be around people uh, who will help you, who will strengthen you in your faith. Uh, if you want to, you talk to somebody who can give you some counsel, who can give you some advice, who can strengthen you spiritually. Because we need each other and we can help each other overcome uh, our spiritual battles. In Galatians 6 and verse 1, the Bible says, If any man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Now, of course, it's talking about a brother who's already fallen, that you bring him back on his feet. But how much better it would be if you take the same advice, but do it before somebody falls. That you, those of us who are spiritual, that we, in, in the spirit of gentleness, we can strengthen others who may be going through a, a, a time of intense temptation. We can strengthen them so they don't, don't need to fall, that they can overcome. And so therefore, we must draw upon each other's strength um, and, and, and learn to get spiritual support and help so that we can overcome. The point I want to bring across to you is this. Look, you and I are going to face temptations. We should not be ignorant of the schemes and the ways and the devices of the enemy. We must know how he attacks us in the mind and we must know that uh, we can overcome that we must press into prayer, be before God in prayer, because that's our secret place. Uh, we need to use our sword and shield and overcome, uh, resist the devil. And of course, we can get help from other brothers, um, other people to uh, come through to victory in every time or season of temptation. Before we close this uh, program today, let's pray together. And I want to pray and ask the Lord to really impart strength to you to overcome whatever temptation you might be facing. I pray that God will impart strength into your life and that those works of the enemy against your mind will cease and that you will be uh, uh, victorious against those attacks on your mind. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. We thank you for the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray right now that your strength, your grace, your uh, the power of your spirit be released, Father God, to those who are watching. And I pray that they will have the strength to overcome every temptation, that they will see your way of escape, and that they will walk through to victory, and that they will be able to resist, successfully resist the enemy in areas in which he's presenting temptations in their mind. And God, that each one will triumph and overcome and walk in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We invite you to visit our church website, apcwo.org, where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people and remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money. And uh, therefore, we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India.
I have a calling to be salt and light. I'm part of a family that empowers me to fulfill this commission. I have a job, but then I was always passionate to study the word. We are students from different walks of life. My potential is best tapped in an environment like this. Where I get the opportunity to reach out and to minister. A culture where there's supernatural impartation through anointed leaders. I can now aim for excellence because that is God's beautiful design. I am equipped to impact. Come. Discover. Fulfill. Admissions are now open for the two-year full-time course at the APC Bible College in Bangalore starting July 2017. For inquiries about the course and other details, please do get in touch with us on our toll-free number 1-800-300-00998, mobile number 99457-0977 or landline number 080-6561-0213. You can also email us at contact at apcwo.org. You can download the application form from our website apcwo.org slash Bible College.